hotbed for hate right here in our own backyard. For years now, white supremacy has thrived here in the Northwest. And tonight, in a special report, our Cole Miller introduces you to two people who know it well. One still a dedicated member, another who's reformed and now working to help others. The Pacific Northwest is full of beauty. There is no arguing that. There's also no arguing that there is an ugly side. The Southern Poverty Law Center now saying there are more than 30 hate groups in Oregon and Washington. Many of those are white supremacists. So what brings us here to Vancouver, British Columbia? The story of a former skinhead who's now made it his mission to get others out of the lifestyle he once lived. And back home in Portland, we're hearing from a high-ranking member of the National Socialist Movement, neo-Nazis. And she tells me that the movement is alive and thriving. Here are their stories. And I didn't actually grow up in a broken home or a home with violence. Born in Liverpool and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia, violence would soon find its way to Tony McAleer. White power, one, two, three, four! I remember when the first single came out by Screwdriver called White Power. At just 16 years old, that sort of changed everything. He was a member of the White Aryan Resistance. A sense of purpose, a sense of power is absolutely intoxicating. Being with a crew of skinheads and, and beating people up, that was power. McAleer says for 15 years he ran up and down the West Coast, recruiting and advancing that mission of hate and a white nation. The Pacific Northwest appealing because of all the land and resources. The perfect place to lay roots, lay out the ideology, and build that white nation piece by piece, eventually consuming the region. White supremacy has, for decades, lived here. In the middle of all of that madness, though, McAleer became a father. And for the first time in my life, I made a decision that put someone else ahead of myself. By 1998, he had cut ties with his old ways. And in 2001, he co-founded Life After Hate. The level to which somebody's willing to dehumanize another human being is really a reflection of how internally disconnected and dehumanized they are. His weapon of choice no longer clenched fists, but his heart and compassion. We've had 10 times more inquiries than we had in the previous five years. Through social media, McAleer and volunteers reach out to those caught up in the white power ways, offering them a new beginning. What do you see that's most alarming? Is this a trend that continues to grow? The growth is in young people. Uh, often they've experienced some sort of isolation, and, and it's, it's in the hundreds of thousands. It's not in the, in the tens of thousands. We are being suppressed, whether people realize it or not. Like you have black civil rights, Hispanic civil rights. Well, white people have civil rights as well. This is Hattie Bell. Hidden in her silhouette is her skin color. She's white. We stand in defense of America on an America first policy. And for the last four years, she's been a part of the National Socialist Movement in Oregon. That are selling our race and our people down the river. When I was in middle school in Florida, I was harassed uh, pretty bad by a, a black chick. She says that started her down the path she's now on. Do you consider yourself a white supremacist? No, I don't, uh, because white supremacy in my eyes is where a white person would hold themselves higher than everybody else, um, higher than every other race, and that's not how I believe. It was at this point I had to ask her about the movement's website, in part listing 25 points of the party, covering things like non-white immigration. Well, right now there's a huge influx of illegal Somalians, Nigerians, and Hispanics, mainly Mexicans from Mexico. If that person's illegal, they get help first before we do. We were here first. There's also sharp language targeting both the Jewish population and homosexuals. Homosexuality is a disease. It's a mental disorder. It's not really liked upon. Is it far-fetched for someone to believe, though, that if they were to jump on the website and look at, say, those 25 points, that there isn't hate there, that those words don't speak or allude to some kind of hate? Hate is such a strong word. We don't hate anybody. 
I don't hate anybody. You don't hate Jews? You don't hate homosexuals? I don't hate anybody. Moving at a progressive rate can may be good for some people, um, but for us, we like our traditional morals and values. This is a new era in white nationalism in the United States. Something Patty Bell tells me she hopes that someday this national socialism will be the law of the land. If you could look someone who's a white supremacist or a member of any other hate group for that matter in the eyes, what would be the one thing you would say to them? I'd say it's not worth it. Nothing in your life is really going to thrive and work out. You realize it's not working out for you. Um, we'll be here to, uh, to help you. In Vancouver, British Columbia and Portland, Cole Miller, Coin6 News. And it's important to note that Cole did reach out to about a dozen other white supremacy groups like the Hammerskins and the American Vanguard, and none of those organizations got back to him. We have